What's up, Overtakers? Here we are, another shed video. OTL HQ. This is uh, where we are today, and uh, I want to tell you all about epoxy flooring. So, um, because, well, I don't know that much about it, other than the fact that I've done this. <laughs> we'll take you a little bit through my experience on epoxy flooring. I thought it might be a cheap, simple way to go. You see these uh, different kits at uh, Super Cheap and uh, Bunnings, and thought I'd just snag one of those and whack it on in a day and we'll be done. Well, not quite, but uh, it is something that you can definitely do at home. And I'll take you through uh, the process that I went through to get this finish on this floor, which I'm really happy with. So, um, and shout out to Sally as well, big hand. Wouldn't have done it without her. Tyler, he was pretty slack. Where, I don't know, where, did he, where was he? Where, where even, where is he? <laughs> very, quiet, very quiet over there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, now let's, uh, have a little bit of a chat about this uh, epoxy flooring and I reckon the people will enjoy it and I reckon that everyone should give it a go you know DIY doing it yourself it's nothing better than uh, the feeling you get when you finish the project mate that's definitely right and uh, let's let's have a look at what we went through the processes the steps uh, I think uh, we'll show you the different products that I used as I mentioned uh, there was a few different ones there add-on it wasn't just as simple as grab the kit and go and uh, I think there's some learnings there and wait till the end and I'll tell you uh, some of my experience of do's and don'ts from, uh, from this project. So uh, stick around to the end and in the meantime, hit like, hit subscribe if you want to see more videos about cars, sheds, whatever we're showing. And Something if you want to support the channel in, a, uh, in another way, make sure you hit the hit join button as well, become a members, member. Become a member for some extra perks. Otherwise, uh, let's um, start where we started, empty the shed out. Let's do it. All right, so this is where it all started. I popped into Bunnings and I grabbed myself a Dymark all-in-one epoxy kit. So I originally was looking at Rust-Oleum and the products there, but they seem to have gone off the market with those and they're very limited in what you could get and the colors that are left. So uh, we went with the Dymark kit from Bunnings and I grabbed two of these for a three bay uh, garage. This is um, nine meters by seven meters. Had to think about that. So nine by seven area is what we're doing so we grabbed two of these kits and that's where it started but there was a bit more to it but it all started there and then we started cleaning it so the cleaning process according to the kit is just to get in give it a good gurney and then uh, get rid of all the grease stains or anything like that we we're pretty safe there because it was a very new floor so it wasn't a whole lot to do there and then they do send you in this kit some uh, stuff to do acid etching which is uh, like a citric acid uh, type stuff that they you put over the floor and gurney off now uh that's where it all's changed because uh i posted up some pictures and the process and then someone got in contact with me that does epoxy floors uh professionally and said don't do that you'll uh it'll soak in it'll it'll eat your concrete away it'll make it dusty uh it'll possibly you know eat into your rio um there's you've got to grind it so that's where the next step started but Let's have a quick look at the cleaning of the floors. So yeah, got the old gurney out, got stuck into it, give it a bit of a clean, and a uh, nice little spray through here. It was uh, pretty warm actually, so it was uh, good to get that pressure washer out. Time to loose the thongs, that was getting a bit slippery. Uh, give it a good scrub, Sal's heading around with the scrubbing brush and we give it a good clean. Uh, a couple of spots of uh, grease. If you had a lot of uh, grease and stuff on your floor and you were actually uh, prepping an older floor, then you'd need to go through that with a lot more degreaser and really uh, soak it in. Stiff brush, get into it, give it a good spray out. Now this is where the process got a little bit more in depth. So it wasn't as simple as just spraying it off with a bit of water and a bit of acid and hose it off and you're good to go. 
not quite. We give it a good clean, uh, but then we went through the uh, grinding process and uh, we popped up to, to Kennard's Hire up the road and um, I was just going to get like a handheld grinder and uh, go across that whole floor. Pretty glad I didn't end up doing that because I didn't have one in stock. So uh, they said they could do a big one. It was a bit pricey. We said, ah, oh, we're going to go check out Coates. And they said, I'll tell you what, we'll drop the price. So they gave us a day hire. It was under $400 for the day hire with the vacuum, the grinder, and uh, banged it out, give it a good grind, and uh, got the floor fairly level, and um, yeah, ready to go. Ready, all prepped up. Was there anything else that you needed to do with the grinding? Like, well, obviously we had grinding. to get rid of all the dust and stuff after the grinding then, so that was the next step. Uh, grind it, get rid of the dust. The vacuum was a big help in that, so... That was really good. It would have been a very messy process without the vacuum. So we're glad we got the extra uh, vacuum. We got the walk behind machine, which was much easier. We had a few issues with the blades, but we took them back, swapped them over, got it all going again, and uh, we were ready to go. And why is it important to grind the concrete? Now, the, the difference, uh, and the reason we went to this extra step was uh, the guy that does these floors professionally, he messaged me and he said, you can do it the easy way with the acid and everything and you know you're probably going to get a good couple of years out of your floor no worries at all uh, but he said if you want to get 10 years out of your floor put a bit extra effort into it and uh, and then go the extra step grind it prime it uh, seal it put all this extra stuff on now he, he also recommended not to go with the the um the cheap kit, but I'd already bought that, so that's where we were going. I'd already got a couple of those. I'd opened the boxes. I couldn't take them back, so uh, it was it was it was on game with that stuff. And uh, you know, so far I'm pretty happy with the result. So I could say it was still good enough, uh, but we did take some extra steps. So I stepped it up now and got the uh, got the grinder, got the big guns, and uh, earmuffs on, and away I went. So the next step was now the primer. So we did put in a primer down and that was the uh, EP52 uh, we used from uh, Oncrete, which was a two-part uh, epoxy primer undercoat. So we, we put that down and a uh, we'll couple of shots of that now. Just going down, it was uh, actually leaves a nice finish as well. If you just want a nice uh, clear finished floor, uh, concrete look still uh, with a bit of shine to it, then I uh, recommend this product. And why do you use the primer? Why is that important? So the, the big uh, difference here to use the primer is to make sure that we get a good seal. Uh, we've already grinded it, that was part of it. We want to make sure that we get a good seal. We then use the primer and then that uh, adheres with the epoxy. Make sure that we don't get hot tire pickup uh, or anything like any lifting once we've put it down. So really important there. Uh, we also, sorry, before that, we did put down some uh, there was just some hairline cracks that probably didn't need it because they were very thin, but we put down some Rust-Oleum fast patch as well. I just used a bit of that just to make sure that everything was good. So the primer is helping in uh, adhering the epoxy to it in the final finish. That's right, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Just make sure it all sticks down, nothing lifts, and it, uh, it lasts. So this is where we laid down the EP52 that come from uh, Oncrete. The reason we used this was uh, because we did have contact, as I said, from someone that uh, does this for a living and uh, they actually sold us this for cost price. So uh, that was easy, it was just down the road. So we grabbed that off them and got stuck into it. You can see, put a bit of time and effort around uh, taping it up around the edges there, giving it a uh, nice, nice seal. So, I laid it on fairly thick, there's uh, plenty there to go through. Alright, so the die mark stuff, we've got that uh, ready to go down now, so it's time for epoxy. So uh, we mix up the, the parts of this, uh, as per the recommended, and uh, in this is also comes, we use the slate, uh, and what comes in that is the flakes as well. Now, I wanted quite a heavy flake, and I wasn't really uh, satisfied with the amount of flakes that come in this kit to be able to do the heavy flake. So I did go and uh, found some um, Rust-Oleum flake kit 
uh, that was left over uh, in a few shops. I had to search around uh, online on Super Cheap and I found a store that had some in stock, popped up there and got some. And then we, uh, and then we played uh, beer pong for a while. Oh no, no, we didn't play beer pong. We measured it out into cups. Measure it out into the cups and uh, yeah, play a couple of games of beer pong and uh, have some hang on, fun. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I measured that out. Oh. Not you. Yeah, she did help. So this is a hey, great opportunity to do this uh, with, your, with your partner and uh, get out there. What do you think? The man's shed? Man's shed? Yeah, no. Not a man's shed? Not a man's shed. <laughs> no, it's my shed too. <laughs> my car's in here. <laughs> Dave's HJ. <laughs> you yeah. wish. Hey, you what's wish. going on there? I thought you took over the ute. Is that mine too? That's, no, that's mine. No, that's yours. And this that's is mine. mine. Oh. Yeah, it's my prem. They're all mine. My you... premier. I'll let you drive my Integra. <laughs> you can have the Integra. <laughs> I got a speeding ticket. <laughs> Ladies, it's a it's... like and subscribe, girls. Yeah, get, get on, on it. it. Get on it. It's for all of us. It is. It is. We're um, yeah. It's a family thing. It's a family thing. Huh. We all love our cars. It's, yeah. Definitely. All right, let's start doing the flake. Or oh, we've already done it. We've already done it. We'll show you. <laughs> <laughs>what we sort of worked on, just square sections and then uh, get the flake down because obviously you uh, go too big of a square, you're not going to be able to get that flake into the back corners and right up into that back area. Sally went around and she spent the time to do the edging uh, and I got the easier job of just uh, rolling it out and uh, don't, don't uh, paint yourself into a corner, just remember to uh, work your way to the outside, plan it out before you start. Right, now I wanted this finish to be a little bit more glossy. So this is where we came in with the top coat. Now you could stop with the, uh, just the, the epoxy, but I wanted to put a little bit extra on there. So we've gone in with a top coat, a polyurethane, two part coating, and uh, put that on. Now that was, um, what was that called, Tyler? It was uh, the- Polyurethane um, SV63. The SV63 from Oncrete. That's where we went uh, and got that, the SV63 put that down, one tin of that was enough to cover um, 60 square metres, we had about, yeah, about that, so I think we had a bit more, hang on, I don't know, well, I forget the maths now, but we had enough to cover it with one tin, and uh, yeah, pretty happy with the final, final finish. I just mentioned some of the extra uh, steps that we took that I probably didn't mention through the video, what did I forget? So we sanded it after we flaked it to get rid of the excess flakes. Yeah, that was yeah, another step, yeah, so we went through that, just... Um, uh, bought a cheap pole sander. Yeah, it wasn't a super fantastic job, I guess. It was just a quick go over, just to loosen up the... It was a great job. Just <laughs> didn't need a super fantastic pole. <laughs> Still did a great job, come on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, that's right. We, uh, we did that just to get rid of the loose flakes, make sure they were out before we put the uh, polyurethane the coating coat down, over. Yeah. Um, what are some things that you would recommend to people who want to do this themselves? Make sure you prep it right. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think if we were to recommend some things to people about what to do would be prep it prep. properly. Yeah, yeah, spend the prep time. Now, what you don't see, I guess we we just cut all that together in the video now. But what you don't see, that was the process across an entire week. So it was sort of each day we did a bit. There was cleaning, let it dry out. There was grinding. Yeah. Then there was cleaning. Yeah. Then there was um, you know these were there was all separate days. Then there was uh, the the primer that had uh, dry time. 24 hours, yeah. Yep, yeah. then we had the epoxy, uh, then we had dry time. Uh, there was taping, all the taping Yeah, all up, the taping up, yep. Uh, as well, don't forget uh, that bit, we did all the tape up. Uh, there was a lot of prep involved. The prep was the longest part, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and, and that's the, um, I guess the, the hardest part was the prep, um, getting it done, getting your tape down properly. Uh, one thing I would recommend too is that to remove the tape when you're finished. Don't let it dry first. <laughs> yeah, we did have a small patch where we had an issue where, because we left the tape across, we put the tape down and we left that same tape at the, on the edges out the front yeah. uh, across the whole week. So it then, some of that came yeah. off with the tape. We didn't get the perfect edge in one spot, which yeah. uh, was a little bit annoying. But 
yeah, so take that tape back off when it's wet on that front edge. Yeah. So inside was fine. Yeah, yeah, inside was good. It was, yeah. We had no issues there. Uh, so that's probably one big learning. Yeah, make sure you re-tape uh, with the different coats. Yeah. Don't, don't let it set. Uh, also, I think it is handy to have more than one person. You, yeah, you could to, do it on you your own. You could do it on your own, but it'd be, it'd be tough because stuff dries out quickly. And um, yeah, you need to get, like you need to be moving section to section. It's, yeah, it's easier to do it with a second pair of hands. And that's important too, do it in a, in a section. And you'll notice that in the video when you see where we're doing a, a square and then putting flakes down. Uh, don't try and do half the shed and then flake it because it's not going to settle properly. Your the flake won't, won't go sit. in. Yeah, yeah, you've got to do a little section at a time and then move on. But you've got to do that fairly quickly. Otherwise, your epoxy is going to set. Set and in your bucket. And it, yeah, and it'll change colour <laughs> too. Yeah. Like it, it will, you will notice the, the different the difference. shades. Yeah. Yeah, and you want to try and do the whole shed in, in one day. In one so day. if you're doing a big shed, you're going to be mixing your second batches, third batches, yeah, we had to if, you do, if you're doing a big shed, I would recommend multiple people, like not just two. You'd probably want a, a third, maybe a fourth pair of hands just to, you know, to have one person doing each step. Yep. So that you can continue to move. Otherwise, it's, yeah, it'll be all set and done before you get there. It's, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, just use, use the good products. So, uh, so we spend a little bit extra uh, in doing the, the top coat, the, the undercoat and, and the grinding. But I think uh, all up, uh, to give you an idea of the total cost, uh, we were we were under two thousand yeah. dollars for the entire thing. Um, I'm not sure exactly where we were. No, no, I'd have to sit down and work it out. But uh, yeah, we probably had about five hundred bucks worth of uh, epoxy. epoxy. Uh, there was a couple of hundred bucks in the in the uh, primer, yeah. a couple of hundred dollars in the. Uh, we don't have the tin, the, the top coat. Uh, then there was little things like the the patch kit, the extra flakes. Um, we bought new rollers. Yeah, yep. new brushes. New brushes. Yep. Uh, we used new uh, rollers each time as well because we, and we wanted to make sure that it was not new poles, but new... Uh, new rollers. New, yeah, yeah. lint-free rollers as well. Yep. Yourself lint-free rollers, you don't want that in there. Uh, I think that's pretty much the, the tips and tricks that we could give. Yep. But uh, in comparison to what it would cost you to get a professional in, uh, look, you're saving a lot of money. Uh, a professional is going to do a professional job. You're going to get some warranty and stuff as well. So you, uh, you know, if you if you do muck it up and you've done it yourself, you're gonna you're gonna have to wear that. Uh, but there is some satisfaction in doing it yourself as well. Yeah. We were, uh, we, we'd never done anything like this before with the flooring, and we're really happy with the result. It's yep. really good to walk on. Um, it always looks clean. It hides any dirt and stuff as well. It does hide any nuts and bolts you drop as well a little bit. <laughs> uh, keep in mind that it is uh, slippery if it's wet. Um, so if you spill a drink or water or something on it's gonna, it, it, that will be slippery. You'll need to wipe that up. But, not, but it, the easy thing, it does wipe up easy as yeah. well. So yeah. it uh, Easily cleaned. Yeah, so yeah. oil, um, transmission fluid, all that sort of stuff, uh, is, it, it'll clean up. Just wipe it up with a cloth and it uh, doesn't soak in, doesn't stain. And uh, any scuff marks as well, uh, they just wipe off. We've been using you know, trolley jacks in here and uh, car stands and you, you can't see any marks from them. So, yeah. so I'm really happy with that. What do you reckon? Yeah. We, we do the lounge room next. We can move up the floor. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, I um, think it was uh, well worth the investment. Yeah. And hopefully, uh, yeah, you get something out of this video and uh, learn a little bit from our experience and what we did with the extra steps. I think that's important. We didn't just use the kit. We did use, uh, to put a bit more into it. So, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, do go, go the extra steps. I... The difference between it lasting you two years or 10 years, you know, what, yeah. what, are you, what would you prefer? Spend a little bit extra? You know, you could get away with 600 bucks and just do the kit, uh, but you might have to do it again in two years. And yeah. I would say second time around, you're definitely grinding that floor because uh, you're gonna to have to bring you up all get the it old, all off. You're yeah. gonna to have to bring up all the old epoxy, put new epoxy down. That's gonna be a much bigger job. From here, we should be able to maintain this if it does wear, uh, and we need to do this in a couple of years' time or whenever. It, probably, hopefully, longer. It should last a lot longer. But we could just sand it now uh, and redo the top coat. So we would just we give it a sand, scuff it back, and then redo it with the polyurethane 
a two-part top coat and uh, and that'll come up like new again so yeah there you go there's our tips so hopefully you enjoyed this something a little bit different um, we didn't race any cars today but they're, <laughs> they're here and we're gonna do some work on them and uh, if you want to see what else we got and we've got some other stuff coming we'll see all this fit out of the shed we'll do a shed tour and uh, something else that another product that we're going to review that's coming into the shed we might go and actually film that now but uh, in the meantime if you want to see that hit the bell like subscribe down below get and, on it uh, girls yep get on it for the ladies as well <laughs> and uh, yeah let's uh, get out in the rocket lane see you in the next one <laughs> stay in the right lane Messing around.